Good morning. Good morning. Hi, everyone online. Hi, everyone here. So today is Mother's Day, right? Yeah. yeah. So did you guys even know about that? Did you yeah. Know? Oh, that's good. We got my mom on Mother's Day gift. We got her a uh, kitty. You got her, well, you're trying to keep it a secret? Maybe she's going to watch this and just going to figure out what it is. What'd you get? Me? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking to Isaiah. Oh, wait. No, yeah. you were talking then, so. Okay, so uh, we got mom. She already got her gift, but we got her the highest quality sound um, eliminating headphones. Oh. So, so she doesn't have to listen to you guys yeah. anymore. She can just put it on and yeah. it's good to go. And well, you got, it's on God's own case, and the, and the things that go on your ears can be taken off. And put that could be the greatest Mother's Day gift ever. Yeah. She hears noise, she just puts it on, and it's all gone. Alright, so I uh, hope you guys today make your moms feel special. They do a lot of work for you. Um, to every single day they do a lot of work. And one thing we talk about is kids are always eating, right? They always want, are always hungry, always want a meal. So um, they do that and so many other things. So just make sure they feel special today, okay? So uh, this week we're talking about church history uh, for the second week. Last week I understood, I understand you talked about church history as well, but earlier on, what do you, what do you remember from last week? You guys don't remember anything? Do you remember anything from last week about church history? Oh, you weren't here? I was totally here. Okay, so with the church, uh, this, so they were, at one point, uh, the, uh, the Sanhedrin, or the Jewish counselor, whoever the enemies were, they were crucifying a ton of, or killing a ton of Christians, and then that only motivated the Christians to keep their faith. So instead of destroying the church, it actually made it bigger. Right. Okay. So persecution, kind of instead of instead of people saying, "Oh, I don't want to be persecuted. I'm not going to become a Christian," it made them serious about what they were doing. And so, yeah, it kind of served the opposite purpose. You're right, Do You guys remember anything else? So uh, there was persecution, um, and many Christians died during that. Um, what what are Christians uh, what are Christians called who died because of their faith? Martyrs. martyrs. Do you remember who the first martyr was? Oh. Way in the back. Stephen. Stephen. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Good job. That's right. So uh, yeah, Stephen was the first martyr. And also, do you remember? Um, did you guys talk about an emperor who? Um, became a Christian? They did. They did. You guys remember his name? Constantine. Constantine. So yeah, so there was an emperor, his name was Nero, who kind of did a lot of the persecution of the church. Um, and then there was another emperor later on, um, around 300 or so, and he became a Christian. And a lot of things changed. So, one, uh, Christians weren't persecuted as much, right? It became uh, uh, a popular thing, the end thing to do to become a Christian. Uh, another thing, so do you remember when Christians gathered, they would meet in things called catacombs? Or you had to be protected so they wouldn't be persecuted and killed? So instead of them meeting uh, in these kind of hidden places, they would, uh, they were built these big churches, uh, eventually called cathedrals, and they were, pr and they're pretty amazing to look at. Um, and they were, they were elegant and beautiful. Um, they took years to build. Um, I also mentioned it was an honor to become a Christian. So, so back during that time, instead of you know, when you become a Christian, you believe that Jesus is the Lord of your life. And that you start changing how you live because of what Jesus said. But now, during this time, 
uh, since it was, it was such an honor to become a Christian, you would just become a Christian because you wanted an important position in the, in the government or something like that. And so there were lots of people who really didn't believe in Jesus but were still called themselves Christians so they could have important positions. Yes, Jacob? Well, this is not about the position, but so after all this happened and the church was going and everything, then um, there were religions that, like, people were changing up the topic of Christianity and they're kind of changing the rules of how you go to heaven. There was the, uh, the yeah. other stuff, like, the, thing, the place that you go to. Oh, yeah. Purgatory? Purgatory. Yeah. And, Did you guys talk about that last week? Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll talk about that a little bit more again today. So I I just like really, I just like really long lines. That's why I do this. <laughs> no, that's not true. So this is kind of like a timeline. So do you guys, are you familiar with the with B.C. and A.D.? Yep. Do you know what B.C. means? Before Christ. Before Christ. Do you know what A.D. means? Wow. Um, Noah. What did you say? Yes. Which means? In the year of our Lord. All right. So the... Uh, what happened with Jesus and his death and resurrection was such an important thing that people began to um, do, a, like they ordered the years around what happened with Jesus when he was born and also, so um, I'm going to say this circle is like the cross and so everything here is BC and then everything over here is AD. All right, so here in this area, so let's say this is current today. So we'll say 2021. Okay, so we'll say over here is the era of persecution. I'll just write first for short. And then, and then I'm going to right around here. It's when the Roman Empire fell. So we all are familiar with the Roman Empire. Did you talk about this at all last week? The Roman Empire falling? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So eventually it fell. I'm going to say around the year 400 or 500. And when it fell, it... Um, a new age started. We call the, these the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. And we call them that because when the Roman Empire was in existence, there was lots of order and lots of peace because it was all one big empire. And so people were fighting amongst, amongst each other. Um, so when the Roman Empire fell, then it kind of fractured the land into all kinds of different governments. And they started fighting. Um, and then what also happened is there was lots of disease and famine uh, and things like that. People um, died. And so there's something called the bubonic plague. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, that's also kind of called the Black Death. And so um, do you know how many people died as a result of that plague? Jacob, do you have a guess? Is that the plague that rats took to Europe? Uh, I think it, it did have something to do with rats, yeah. Okay, did that kill like two-thirds of the population of Europe? Oh man, it was like at least half, half of the population of Europe. And so, uh, so there was a big span where it was, that plague was really, really powerful for about five years. And during that five years, it killed about 25 million people, a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to draw another line. We're going to say around 1500. So this whole time is the Middle Ages. I don't know if you can read that from there, but the Middle Ages. So um, also what we understand is that the church was basically one church. So I don't know if you realize, but today there's all kinds of different churches or denominations. 
So like there is Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Reformed. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but there's all kinds of different churches. Back then, it was just, there, for the most part, for our conversation, there was one church, uh, the Catholic Church. And so during this time, um, the Catholic Church had a lot of power. And it was partially because there was only one, one church around. And another thing that um, gave them power was that, like, for example, the Bible, which is very common. So if you, in your house, you probably have lots of different Bibles, and you might even have your own Bible. Um, but back then, Bibles were rare. And if you had a Bible in your house, man, you were, uh, you were probably rich. And if you had a Bible in your house, it was written in a language you probably couldn't read, uh, the language of Latin. And so uh, the majority of people didn't have Bibles. Um, if they did it, it, uh, it was in a different language. Even if when you went to a church service, a lot of times they would speak in the church service in a different language. Can you imagine that? A language that you didn't even understand. So let's say I'm here talking in Spanish. And no one here knows Spanish, but you're still here. Wouldn't that be crazy? Yeah, that'd be horrible. Why, 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 why would you be here? Yeah, you wouldn't want to be here. But I will tell you back then, so the so there is a person called the Pope. You're, I think you're familiar with the Pope, right? Talked about that a little bit. He was a leader of the whole church. And because people didn't have Bibles, because a lot of people didn't know uh, what the Bible said, they just had to trust that what they did about going to church and whatever the Pope said, that that was true and accurate. And so that's why they went to church, is because even though they didn't understand a lot of stuff that was going on, they went there because they thought it was the right thing to do, because they thought it was a good thing to do. Um, so that was, that was just some of the stuff going on in the Middle Ages. The church had a lot of power. Um, there wasn't a lot of, like, education, there wasn't a lot of um, art and things like that. Um, people were just basically trying to survive. Um, the next period, so this starts right around here, is called the Renaissance. Renaissance period. And that's when um, there was a renewed interest of things that were happening back then in the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire. Um, people were more uh, serious about education, learning about art, uh, and things like that. There was also the invention of something called the printing press. Yep. Yeah. Right? And so, yeah, so before the printing press, if someone had written a book or something like that, and it wanted it copied, someone just had to hand write the whole book down on the paper. And it would take a long time, uh, and it just it just didn't happen very often. It happened, but not very often. But when the printing press came along, then that's what kind of started the Renaissance. What helped the Renaissance going is that books were being mass produced and spread out among all different kinds of people, uh, and went to all different kinds of places. Uh, and one of the biggest things that happened to the church during the Renaissance was the Reformation. Okay, so we'll talk more about the Reformation, but in order to understand the Reformation, we're going to talk a little bit more about the church uh, and what was going on. So, Jacob, you already mentioned, and maybe you guys already know, that the church, the church was teaching a, about a place called Purgatory. Okay, so Purgatory is some place you go after you die. So, they said that you didn't go straight to heaven to be with God when you die. You went to a place called Purgatory. And Purgatory is a place where um, basically you would be punished for a time um, because of all the sins you committed on earth. And the more sins you had, the more time you would spend in Purgatory. So let me ask you a really important question. Is this true? No, there's really nothing in the Bible that supports uh, the place like purgatory. 
Um, let me, I'm just going to turn uh, to Romans 8, 1, or Romans chapter 8, because um, this was a, actually a very important book during the time of Reformation, the book of Romans. And in chapter 8, it says this, I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So no condemnation means you don't have to go to a place like purgatory and be punished for a sin that you did here on earth. There's no, there's no guilt for those who are in Christ Jesus. You are free. So I'm going to jump to verse 32. It says, he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. So, this is talking about a God who's going to give the people who believe in him all things. He's not going to let people go be punished um, after they believe in Jesus for who knows how long in a place called purgatory, he's going to give you good things. And I think that's one of the one of the things that one of the most important things to know about God is that he is good. And so and then the gift that he gives us in Jesus Christ is the best gift ever because there is no punishment, no condemnation, no need for a place called purgatory. Uh, and no one can condemn us anymore. So, um, so I just want you to understand, the majority of people, they had no way of knowing if a place called purgatory was true or not. Because um, they didn't have Bibles, and if they had a Bible, they probably couldn't read it. Only the most educated people, um, which is maybe, maybe 5% of the population, could read um, but they're also going to tell you, back in the Middle Ages, there's a place called monasteries. And so monasteries were, uh, have you heard of monks and things like that? Um, monks, so monasteries, there were, there were monks and even nuns, you're probably familiar with nuns as well, um, that would go to live in monasteries, and they would just live a life um, kind of isolated by themselves, and they would just read and read the Bible and pray, and they would also serve the poor. They did some really good things that helped keep education and literature like that um, going, but they also did some bad things too, because when monasteries grew really popular and became rich, they did some uh, bad and moral things too. But anyway, so in the, um, oh, one other thing I was gonna tell you. So have you heard of something called indulgences? Can you say that with me? Indulgences. Indulgences. Yeah. So, um, so we know about purgatory. Indulgence was something that is kind of like a marketing genius by the church. So they were saying, well, no one who wants to spend time in purgatory? No one does, right? And so they had this thing called indulgences. Indulgences could be could take a number of years off of your time in purgatory. Uh, but the key thing is you had to pay for these things. So it was kind of like paying for forgiveness. You could buy them for yourself. You could buy them for friends or family. Um, for people who had even already died. So let's say someone that you know had died and was already in purgatory. And you're like, man, I don't want them to suffer and be punished for who knows how long. So I'm going to buy an indulgence for them so they don't have to spend as long in purgatory. So it's actually very sad because people didn't have a lot of money then. And so the church was taking what little money people already had in order so that they could get more money, uh, so the church could get more money, uh, just on the pretense of getting people out of the place called purgatory. So um, let, me, let me give you an example. So Melanie is my daughter. Let's say, Melanie, it's like 50 years down the road, 
Okay, so you're like 60 years old, which is awesome, right? And let's say I, I had already died, and let's say I'm in purgatory, and someone comes up to you and says, hey, for 20 bucks, you can reduce the time your dad spends in purgatory by five years. Okay, would you pay it? What if you spending that money meant that you didn't have supper for a night? Would you still pay it? How much do I mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> like, what if it's Father's Day? You're like, oh man, I guess I'll spend even forty dollars. Do you see what I'm getting at? Like, the church would make people feel guilty about about uh, their friends and their family, people that they love, in order to say, say, hey, you don't want so and so to be in purgatory, do you? Just give us some money, and then we, you don't have to have them be in purgatory that long. So I think that it's actually a, it was a really um, evil thing to do. I don't know if you remember um, back in the in the Gospels, and there's a there's a time when Jesus went into the temple and he was very angry with the money changers and people selling things in the temple. Do you remember that? He started flipping over tables because he the people in the temple were doing unfair things. People would come to the temple and offer sacrifices, again, to be forgiven because they had done something wrong. And then in order to do a sacrifice, you had to have an animal. But people were making these long trips to the temple and they couldn't bring an animal, so they would go buy one there. And people, uh, the people at the temple were charging way more money, much more money than they should have been doing. And so when Jesus came and saw what's happening, anger, he was angry. And he was so angry that he started flipping over tables and, sh and uh, he was just upset that people were taking advantage of other people trying to get forgiven. And I feel like this is a very similar thing. I think that if Jesus was around, he would have been angry and upset that, he, that the church was taking advantage of people. Did you have a question? No, I'm pretty sure you said this is a house of robbers. Like, yeah, this is this is a this should be a house of prayer, is what he said. Instead of you are making it a, a, a den of robbers. So uh, let me tell you a story about a guy named John Tetzel. He's a guy who sold indulgences. Um, he would say the very instant your money clicks into the box of where you pay. Indulgences, the souls of your friends and family sail out of purgatory into heaven. Okay, so so let me tell you the story. Once there was a man who came up to John and asked to buy an indulgence for a sin he was going to commit. Right, he hadn't yet done it, but he was going to do it, and he wanted indulgences to kind of forgive that sin. John John Tetzel told them how much to pay. The indulgence was written up and given to the man. Later, when John Tetzel was leaving the area with all the money he had made, he was robbed. The robber was captured and ended up being the, the guy who had bought the indulgence for the sin he was going to pay, or the sin he was going to commit. He was sitting in the court and asked, Did you rob John Tetzel? And the guy said, yeah, I did, but you can't do anything to me because I've already been forgiven. He pulled out the indulgence that Tetzel had written up for him, and the judge said, you're right, I can't do anything. You, I can't condemn you, you're free to go. And after that, John Tetzel became a big joke to everyone. He's like, oh, you, you sold him indulgence for the guy who just robbed you. So it was kind of a funny situation. So now I've, told, I've talked a little bit about how the church was operating at the time. Um, now we can talk a little bit more about the Reformation. So there were some people who, um, who saw the corruption of the church. Some educated people who were reading the Bible and said, hey, the church is not teaching what the Bible is teaching. You know, things aren't matching up here. And so there is a person called Martin Luther, and there is other people uh, like him that came along. John Calvin was one. But Martin Luther was a monk who lived in the monastery, and he was learning from the Bible. 
that the only way sin can be forgiven is through grace, through what Jesus had done. So one of the things they said was grace alone. doesn't matter how much money you have and how many indulgences you have. The only way you can be forgiven is through God's grace. And you have to have faith in that grace. Through grace alone and faith alone is one of the key things that we learned through the Reformation. So, um, so he spoke about, he spoke out and it disagreed with indulgences and other things. And one day, <clears throat> so back then there, weren't, there wasn't like the internet and things like Facebook and whatever to let people know about stuff. And so uh, a lot of information was if you wanted people to know about something, you put it on a bulletin board, which is like the church door. And so he nailed what he called 95 theses on the church door, and this was like 95 things he disagreed with the church uh, about. So 95 things he said, the church, you're not doing this right. And you know what happened? He drew lots of attention, and so because of the printing press, this uh, his 95 points could be copied, and it was spread all over the country, Germany, where he was at, and even all over Europe. And the Pope was angry. He's not used to people um, disagreeing with him and causing a stir. And so the church wanted to kill him. And so you kind of know that you know things didn't work the way things do now because now people aren't going to be killed if they do something like that. I mean, not not typically. And so the the Pope wanted to have him killed, wanted to have him tried in something and said, hey, you need to recant or you're going to be killed. Um, so, but there were some friends of his who hid him away and kept him safe. And one of the things that he did while he was hidden away is that he translated the Bible from Latin into German, which was where he was from, so that the everyday person could now read the Bible in their own language and understand what was going on and being taught. Um, and that was what a lot of the reformers did, is they would, they would disagree and teach what the Bible really taught and not pay attention to what the Catholic Church was doing or had people do. Um, so when the Reformation happened, so I told you there's one, one church, the Catholic Church, and when the Reformation happened, the church started splitting up, and so... Then came the Lutheran Church. Then came, after a while, uh, the Reformed Church, the Baptist Church, Presbyterians. All of that stuff kind of flowed out of the Reformation over time. Uh, and the Catholic Church tried to crush the Reformation movement to stop it because uh, it was taking a lot of money and a lot of power away from the Reformation. And so there was something that the church did called the Inquisition. Have you, do you know about the Inquisitions at all? The most popular of them was called the Spanish Inquisition. And uh, it, was, it was during this, during these that the Catholic Church tried to force people to believe in what they were saying. And so um, one of the problems with the Inquisition is that people would just say, okay, all right, I, I agree with the Catholic Church. But they didn't really agree with the Catholic Church. They just said it so they wouldn't be punished. And so this went, went against Jews, it went against Muslims, and it went against Protestants, or the people who believed in the Reformation. And if people didn't agree to be uh, baptized and agree with the Catholic Church, they either would be forced out of the country or they would be executed. And you know what the favorite form of, the, of execution the church had? And not crucifixion, they would. What did you say? Well, they would torture them. Wait, you got another guess? Uh, yeah, they either throw stones at them or flog them. Um, oh, they, did they put them in some, uh, like, a lake or something, like a car? Did they put them on a sharp pole and then let's just let them go down? <laughs> you guys have a lot of ideas of how to do this. This, is this really turned into a morbid conversation. 
Uh, so there is some, some that were close. So they would tie them to a pole, and then they would burn them. They would burn oh, the medicine. Oh, I talked about that oh, last yeah. time. And that there is, were that's tough. thousands to hundreds of thousands of people who were killed like this because they refused to, believe, to go along with the Catholic Church. Um, but that's that's what happened a lot during the Inquisitions, and it wasn't. And they would the Catholic Church would do this, like I said, against Jews, against uh, an other faith of the, the Muslim faith, and against Protestants. Jacob, did you have a question? Yeah. What exactly happened to the Christian Church? So, so when you say what what do you mean when you say the Christian it's Church? Like, it seems like the Catholic Church has been has taken over the Christian. Uh, the Christian church is no longer a Okay, so, so yeah, let's go back to the timeline. So, this is when the church started, right? Jesus had died, and uh, there was lots of followers who were in this time of persecution. And this church just kind of morphed in. So, basically, we didn't call the church the Catholic church, because like I said, there is pretty much one church. Okay, so this whole time, up until this time, it's like one church. Okay, so, but we refer to it now as the Catholic Church because when the Reformation started here, the church started splitting up into lots of different denominations or branches. And so, like, I don't know if you knew, but this used, Cherry Hills, used to be called a Baptist church. Now it's no longer a Baptist church. It's just a non-denominational church that's not affiliated with thing. But there is like today there is like Baptist churches, Lutheran churches, Presbyterian churches, Methodist churches, Reformed churches. There's all kinds of churches. There's even church like the Mormon church and other things that we don't acknowledge as true churches. But all that to say is that. All in this time period, this is all one church. And now we refer to it as the Catholic Church just because other denominations started forming. And so, what used to be the church is now called the Catholic Church. Does that answer your question, Jacob? Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone else, too? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so. So who knows about Christopher Columbus, right? Who knows about him? What did he do? Jax? He did. He was in a boat. And the significant thing about where he went was Jacob? He went to America, but he was attempting to go to India. Yeah. He got lost in the storm, found his way to America, and then he started calling everyone native uh, Indian. Uh, uh, Indian. Yeah. Because he was Indian. So what I learned in school was that in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. You guys still learn that? Still he talk should, about that? Um, he should be given the credit for finding a new. Yeah. Because Nick Erickson, Nick Erickson, he lived in. Uh, Iceland? Scandinavian part, yeah. Yeah, he found like half of it. Yeah, okay. So, so in order for Christopher Columbus to go to uh, where he was going, he needed a lot of money, right? And you know who funded the money? Ferdinand and... Oh, man. What? How do you know all this? <laughs> History class. History class, all right. King Ferdinand and Queen um, oh, Isabella. Isabella, yes. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you, so I think you're familiar with them a little bit. Um, and so you might think, oh, man, they did a great thing by helping Christopher Columbus uh, help fund his stuff. But they actually weren't very good people because when I was talking about the Inquisition, they were um, one of the most brutal forms of the Inquisition was the Spanish Inquisition. And they were the king and queen of Spain, and they did a lot of work to get the Inquisition going and even stronger in the country of Spain. So, um, what page am I on? All right. So they 
they did get Christopher Columbus going, but um, they were very devoted to Catholic people. They were very close to the Pope. And so they would call people who didn't agree with the Catholic Church heretics. Heretics are people, I mean, basically who disagree with the Catholic Church, who would, uh, who would say things that the church didn't agree with, basically. And so if someone was accused of being a heretic, you couldn't defend yourself, usually. If someone was accused of being a heretic, they were often condemned. And then if you were accused, you would go to prison. Your property and your possessions would be split up between the king and queen, whoever accused you, and to the pope. Okay? So, if you were rich and had a lot of money, it was a dangerous time for you to be in because someone could just accuse you of being a heretic and then all your, you would go to prison and all your stuff would be split up. And so that's how... Uh, uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella had this money because they would accuse people of being a heretic and then they would basically take their money and they could spend it on whatever they wanted. Jacob, do you have another question? Yeah, so they had to have a reason um, on seeing something or hearing something that happened to make them a heretic. Yeah, I mean, but it could have been a pretty weak reason. Like, yesterday yeah. I saw you at Chick-fil-A and that's a terrible oh. place. And so, I mean, you're a heretic. Did you have a question too? Yeah. Um. So like, so like, like we're we're, we're talking about the Ferdinand and Isabel. Were they alive during like all this, like what we were just talking about, like? The, were they alive? Yeah. Because when we read about the history, it was like something like one thousand some like some. I, don't know. I think they were right in this area. Yeah. Like. Because well, they would have been in the uh, late 1400s, early 1500s. Because um, Columbus came after Lee Harrison, and yes. Harrison discovered America in 1000. So. Yes. Right. Yep. Good. Good job. Good memory. So the Reformation was in full swing, even though um, Protestants. Did I talk about what Protestants were? Protestants, those were people who basically protested against the Catholic Church. So like Martin Luther would have been a Protestant. Anyone who uh, was part of the Reformation would have been a Protestant. Um, so not everyone was splitting off from the Catholic Churches and making new denominations. There were some people who tried to change the Catholic Church uh, within the church and stay in the church. And those were called Puritans. And Puritans are some of the people who went over to America to settle the colonies. Um, there was one person uh, who lived in Rhode Island. His name was Roger Williams. And he was one of the first people who said, um, you shouldn't be forced into a religion by the government or a church. They shouldn't have that much power. So now that's kind of referred to as separation of church and state. Um, but... But basically all he was saying is, it's not good for the Catholic Church to have so much power that they've got to force people to believe what they're saying. Or there were some kings and some governments who had a lot of power, and they would force people to, to be a Catholic, like, in, like uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And that's not good. So he kind of was one of the first people to have um, point out the freedom. So I do want to say one other thing. So I, I mentioned a lot of bad things about the Catholic Church. Yeah. And I don't want you to think that today the Catholic Church is that same way. Um, it's changed a lot. There are some things that are still the same. So um, the Catholic Church still believes in some things we don't believe. Like one thing is that for us, we believe that Jesus is God. We yeah. worship him. But we don't worship anyone else. The Catholic Church uh, prays to and worships people like uh, Mary, who is the mother of Jesus. They pray to and worship other saints, um, and they and that's just a common thing that Catholic churches does. Um, the Catholic Church, like somewhere like it's near here, I can go out across the train tracks, and that's the Catholic Church. 
Catholic Church there? Um, there's a number of Catholic churches in Springfield. Um, yeah. There's at least four or five that I can think of. There might be more. Uh, Jacob, do you have a question? Uh, I was going to have a comment. So my brother goes to military school. Yeah. And so um, there, they have the Catholic each day. Each Sunday or each day, I forgot. Um, and so there was a guy that was praying for the, like, for the cadets, and he said, I'm going to pray for a, I'm going to pray to someone, not for someone. And uh, Michael told us about that, and he was really confused why, because he didn't exactly understand what Orthodox and Catholic and that stuff is. Right. Yeah, it is, I mean, it is a little bit confusing if you're not uh, familiar with that kind of stuff. But yeah, we only pray to someone who can hear our prayers and actually do something, and that's to um, to God. And we believe God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, but yeah, so even though the Catholics still believe in things that we don't believe in, there are still some people who are Catholics who truly believe in God and do, um, and who are dedicated to his work and do some really good things. Like Mother Teresa, if you heard her, she was a Catholic. She lived um, in India and she spent her entire life um, serving the poor in ways that most people couldn't even imagine. But those are, that's just one example. So, um, did, did you guys were you able to fill out your sheets or do you have any questions? Okay. All right. So, uh, let me turn.